Today I'm gonna to do a overview and walk through my full drive. It's 2019 Nissan Navara D23. They are a 2.3 litre twin turbo diesel, six speed manual, solid axle rear independent front suspension, coil springs all round, disc brakes at the front, drum brakes at the rear and it is a dual cab ute i did do a what was it probably five six part series on the build of this whole vehicle but i still just get so many questions all the time so i want to just do one video that runs through all the mods and a little bit of detail of each one why i did them it's always hard to find that balance between too much info being long and boring and not enough try and find that somewhere in between Start the front with the bull bar. It is a Iron Man Commercial Deluxe steel bull bar. Three hoop one. I like the design of this one and it offers a heap of protection. Bull bar gives you a place to mount your accessories, better approach angle and protection from animal strikes, hitting trees, rocks, various things out the bush. What I really like about this bull bar on this vehicle is it curves up with the line of your vehicle. So it's a complete bumper replacement. There's no cutting. Pull the bumper off, put this one on, and I like how it curves up with it. I really like that look and style. Now, one thing of this bull bar that's upset a lot of people is from this angle, it looks like it's mounted crooked or not suited for the vehicle or whatever you want to call it. It's just because it follows the curve of the line, but then it needs to be straight to come in line with the side of the vehicle. And from that angle, it looks like it's all wrong. So once you lift the camera up and bring it over, you can see there it's perfectly mounted. And you need that little bit of movement, a little bit of a gap to allow for movement between the chassis and the body. Otherwise your bull bar will just be whacking into your body work all the time. While we are at the bull bar, I'll go through what I've got on it. I've got an Ironman nine and a half thousand pound synthetic rope. I've had the this exact Ironman winch on both my vehicles and never let me down yet. Used it probably coming up 200 times between both vehicles. Can I only speak very highly of that winch. On the winch, I have taken the original hook off and put a Factor 55 flat link on, which is a closed system, rather than a pin and hook type system. This will still work with both soft and hard shackles and a safer system and it mounts there a lot nicer and kind of looks a bit better too. Lights on the bull bar, square driving lights. These are Iron Man ones as well. They are the Eclipse square spotlights. Actually, when I first sort of was looking, I was like, oh, I don't know, not the traditional circle ones, but I really, I really like them now. And I know some people don't like them. People always like to tell me, oh, I don't like your spotlights. I don't like your bull bar. But that, that's why there's a thousand different accessories you get you get what you like. I like these things. If you don't like them, don't get them. Up the top, we have a Oricom antenna. This is a three or three and a half DBI antenna, but it is interchangeable. So I can take this off, screw an extension on, and it'll become a six, six and a half. Shorter one being better for mountains and the longer one being better for deserts. Underneath on both sides, we have two Ironman recovery points, which are mounted to the chassis. Upgrade from your tie down points when you get your vehicle. These are heavy duty rated points that you can safely snatch off. I don't use them too much, but because I'm normally using the winch at the front, but they are there. And then from the bull bar running back underneath the car, we have a set of three bash plates that protect all the way through to behind the transfer case. So you got your whole front end protected, their custom off-road accessory, three mil steel bash plates, highly important mod in my opinion. Protect your inner cooler, your sump, your front diff, your gearbox, your transfer case. So if I'm smashing or hitting rocks, I know I'm hitting bash plates and not anything else. Now running down the side of the vehicle, rock sliders, another very important body protection part. These are made by Mechfab Industries. Actually, I'm wearing his, wearing his shirt today. A Newcastle fabricator. He custom made these up for me. He does all sorts of cost, custom fabrication work. Did an unreal job. Your rock sliders are mounted to your chassis and rock sliders are made to slide on rocks. They're made to take the whole weight of your vehicle, which I've already done numerous times and they have proven they are capable of that. 
steel side steps will bend generally they're not made they're not made like rock sliders these are your real heavy duty proper deal down the back for protection so we're protected at the front underneath sides and now the back is the iron man steel rear bar i really like it because it will if you're coming down hard on your back you're going to hit this before you hit your tub or anything else and it also has your tubing around the side and underneath. So it kind of protects you from all angles. And it also has a toe point on it. Now these are about the same price as a factory, just like a toe bar thing. So you're better off getting one of these and sort of killing all birds in one stone because you got your protection, you got your towing point, and it also has two rated recovery points on it because this whole thing is mounted to the chassis. You can safely recover off this off both recovery points or you can recover if you put a proper recovery hitch in there. Obviously don't uh, recover off your tow ball, that's a big no-no. But if you get a recovery hitch, you can use that. All right, let's go to the big one. The big one that everyone wants to know that I get asked nearly every day, tires and suspension. These are 28575 R16 Nitto Trail Grapplers. They are a mud terrain tire. I'm very happy with them, I really like them, but I generally like most tyres. I've never got a tyre and thought, oh, this is crap. They all seem good to me. It's still on the factory alloy rims, which seem to mount this tyre without an issue. I haven't had any problems with it. I don't actually know what the offset of this rim is. I'm thinking it's positive 10 or positive 20. The reason I've stuck with this rim is because I don't mind the look of it, and it keeps the car kind of looking quite nice and legal. So you're not attracting any attention with your bigger tires and your lift and all that and it keeps the tires inside your guard without having to then get flares or various bits and pieces and it's just another money to spend when i don't think i really need to i may upgrade to steel rims eventually another thing is i also have an oricom tire pressure monitoring system inside now that's really cool because it's all hidden away inside the rim and it's just like a normal cap there but i'll show that later on but inside my car, I have a little display monitor that constantly monitors the pressure and temperature of all my tires. I've always gone to mud tires when you do sort of regular tough off-roading. I think they're the best to go. You can get your aggressive all-terrains, both gonna work, but you sort of need to upgrade from those road tires. These are a 10 ply, very thick. I've, in four or five years of tough off-roading, I've only ever busted a mud tire once. I hit the sidewall on a big sharp rock and it tore a hole in it. Other than that, I've never never damaged a mud tire. The suspension is a Ironman Foam Cell Pro 50mm lift kit or 2 inch. And giving it that 2 inch lift, that full 2 inch lift, allowed me to fit the 33s. They don't scrub here on your, like, on your mud flaps or anything. That was all good. On full lock, they just touch the inside of the chassis on certain angles. You have to be a little bit careful with full lock. It's not really an issue. I can bring, if I get the new rims, I'll be able to bring the offset out, which will then move it away from the chassis, but then it'll probably gonna start scrubbing there, so I'll have to cut there. So I'm kind of happy with how it is at the moment, but I love that Ironman lift kit. In the front, I'm also running upper adjustable upper control arms. They're super pro adjustable upper control arms, which basically counteract your lift so that you can get your angles right again when you're doing your wheel alignments and stuff like that and also give me a bit more flex and droop on the front end of the car now in the rear i have taken out the sway bar so it basically gives more a lot more suspension travel in the rear it helps big time off road taking out that sway bar and i've also added in a adjustable pan hard rod because once you lift it it kind of took it about 10 mil that way the whole diff the diff the rear diff did not sit center so it took the whole diff and wheels about 10 mil passenger and then that adjustable pan hard rod allowed it to allowed us to recenter everything nicely once again that's saying that's not 100 percent necessary of a two inch lift you can get away with that little bit of imbalance but you would need one for that three or four inch lift and then spare tire for this car is still under in the original spot the 28575 will just fit under here i let it down to about five psi compress it into the ratchet strap and then it'll fit up in there with this rear bar i don't know if the rear bar makes a difference at all it probably would fit still standard or with other rear bars i'm not 100 sure on that 
but you still can get the spare tire up under there, save moving it somewhere else out of the way. Up on top, we have a Ironman awning. I think it's two and a half by two and a half, just a straight pull out awning. I've got a sidewall to go with it, so it gives you plenty, plenty of protection when it's raining. And this one's good because it also has a inbuilt LED light bar in it as well. And then the roof rack up on top, which I use to tie my swag and fuel, max tracks, chainsaws, all your different things up on top is a Rhino alloy roof rack. We have this brand just because it's like a common, seems to be a very common, well-known, tough, good brand. And you've got so many different ways you can accessorize this as well. There's track mounted, meaning it's riveted into the roof, which makes it nice and tough. If you smash it onto a tree or something, it's still likely to, likely to hold up. For the snorkel, I have a black platinum mechanical and suspension stainless snorkel. I just went stainless for for looks really plastic versus stainless um these are probably a little bit stronger they're a lot noisier so they, they do they sound cool but the intake is right next to your ear once i do the wind up come over here but when you got the window down it's, it's very loud next to you I, I don't mind it but i'm not sick of it i don't regret it or anything i'm quite happy with this snorkel and i do like the looks of it snorkel very important to protect your engine from water mud intake and it'll bring up give you sort of um higher away from dust mud water those different things hopefully a little bit better airflow as well now if we head into the bonnet here coming straight snorkel we'll come into a custom airbox i have which is platinum mechanical and suspension again this is a lot more watertight sealed better quality than the factory one it has a k and pod filter in it, which I also have a little sock over as well for extra dust protection. Kind of a little bit debate debate around whether k and n pod filters are better or worse for off-road. A lot of people say they don't handle the dust as well, but I found this one to be quite good, especially once I got that sock over it as well. And it is a cleanable air filter, so it's not like your factory paper ones which you just throw out. These can be cleaned and reoiled when they get dirty. And then other engine mods over this side, we have a oil catch can. Runs a pipe down to a tap, you can get rid of that oil. The oil catch can will help with the oil blowback fumes, the clogging up, carbonate, carbonation, carbonating, whatever it's called of your engine. Basically stop everything clogging up and stop all that oil mist sort of working its way through everything. I find it collects a lot of the oil and keeps everything nice and clean. You sort of just drain that out every once in a while and a secondary fuel filter as well this is a pre fuel filter so it goes fuel tank this fuel filter and then the factory fuel fuel filter before it goes through your injectors and everything else so we've got double protection there highly worth it fuel standards particularly in australia are average and then down in here i have my breathers so i have four breathers for both diffs and for my transfer case and gearbox which keeps water out of all those vital components so it allows them to breathe right up here nice and high rather than suck water into them as well as keeps dust out of them as well other than that everything's pretty standard in here i haven't done a tune or anything like that i've got some new intercooler piping coming from platinum mechanical and suspension in a few weeks the normal plastic silicon type intercooler piping on these cars is a little bit average no very prone to leaks and this one down here blows off and then your car goes into limp mode until you try and reconnect it so i'm going to replace a couple of those intercooler pipings this oil catch can and fuel filter runs off the one bracket here back to front it's a really good spot for it i got this from western filters and it comes with a bracket but we did make up a couple of extra stabilizing points for it as well because it was a bit flappy originally in relation to inside the car it's all quite standard in here have the oricom two-way radio mounted here just a basic 80 channel radio seems to work quite quite well and up on the dash there is where i have that oricom tire pressure monitoring system so i can keep an eye on those tire pressures and temperatures this car comes with a rear factory diff lock standard so you got a diff lock button down here i've got my buttons for my spotlights and then you got your four high four low selector dual battery system to run my fridge camp lights keep all my filming gear and everything charged when we're on the road and at camp 
all set up here. It's kind of a little bit all over the place at the moment because I've just been doing a couple of things to it and I actually just filmed another video on it. So I won't go into too much detail because either just before or just after this video, I'll have a separate video of more detail on this whole system. But it is through Safari, Safari Global, and we have a 100 amp hour slimline lithium battery. So this all lives behind the back seat. The back seat is out at the moment to work on all this. But normally the back seat will go back in and this will be all hidden away. 30 amp hour Victron DC to DC charger to give power when you're driving. And then we have a solar controller here and solar output. It's actually running out the back window at the moment, but I've got an Anderson plug to plug a solar blanket into that to keep it charged as well. So DC, DC charger, power input when you're driving and when your camp set up for a couple of days and you need that bit more power, we've got that solar option too. Lithium, very quickly, lithium is much more expensive. That's the biggest downside, looking about three times the price of your normal AGM batteries but you get maybe 20 years out of a lithium battery a good 20 years at least whereas the agm you get three four five years at the most there you can drain them down to 80 percent very safely and maintain voltage the whole way through whereas an agm normal you can only use 50 percent so even though it's a, only a smallish 100 amp hour battery i can still use 80 of those amps safely Whereas I need 160 amp hour AGM battery to get that same amount of power. Now in under the seat here in this little gap which I can just access by lifting up the seat. We have the fuse box. We got all our fuses to access to change in and out. We got lights to say when one's broken. We got the shunt. We have the big inverter fuse as well. And we have, I can't even remember what these are called, but this is to, this gives me access to the whole system via my phone. So that lid goes on, it lives back down in there. The wiring is a little bit messy at the moment. And then down on the floor here, we got the big inverter to run my, charge on my camera gear, run my laptop. Actually, I have an induction cooktop as well, so I can use induction cooking when I'm away camping. You can run all those different bits and pieces off your inverter there. It's quite a big inverter, so it gives me plenty of power. Now, I am going to build a proper box for this inverter. It's just kind of laying all over the place, a bit untidy at the moment. I just haven't got round to it yet, but there will be a box that'll give it a nice spot on the um, floor here. But I'm gonna make it movable so I can lift it up on the back seat if we're going through a deep water crossing or something like that. If you are a regular camper, tourer, going around trips regularly, I do think lithium's worth the upgrade. It's going to cost you more straight up, which sucks, <laughs> but you're going to get a lot longer life out of it, and it works a lot better. Whereas if you're just going, say, once or twice a year, not really running much off it, it's probably not worth the money for you. And then the other thing I really like about it is it all runs off my phone here, so I've got access there's a couple of things that there is my dad's whose car is just over there because he's running a similar setup but i've got access to all my different things on my phone here so i got access to my this is how i basically monitor and run the whole system um gives me like there's my battery it's on 99 percent because i'm not using it at the moment gives me how much current it's drawing how much it's consumed how much time it has remaining on its current uh, schedule output has history how everything's gone you can change all the settings and monitor it all this one uh, that's the inverter so you can see how much power your inverter is putting out how much loads on it, all those things that's a master switch so you can simply press this here and then the whole system will turn itself on or off if you want to shut everything down your solar, you can check that, see how much solar is coming in when you're running it, see how long it's going to take to charge it up. You can get your history of how much power you've put in and out, all those things there. And your DC to DC, when you're driving, it'll tell you how much is going through your whole system. So it's just awesome that you can see and monitor this whole system through your phone. Now we have some wires that run through the back wall through to the tub here to run my fridge 50 litre waco fridge and i got some outlets here in the back as well two 12 volt outlets and two 
USB outlet so I can charge my phone and run the camp lights little bits and pieces here as well. That's that wire for my solar. I just got it hanging out the back window at the moment and you can just run it out and plug your solar blanket in wherever you need to. For storage in the back I got the fridge, I got 40 litres of water, I got these two blue tubs which I keep a heap of gear in. I have a alloy aluminium alley box there as well to keep gear in so like that's alley boxes or my cookware gear um, for cooking plates cutlery gas bottles all those different things this is like tools recovery gear and then this is more like clothes and bits and pieces i got a couple of chairs down in the middle there got this net over the top basic but works very well and all easily accessible try and quickly answer a couple of questions on this car here at the end now i chose the navara due to coil rears i really like that it rides beautifully on the road especially once you upgrade the suspension as i said i love that iron man suspension gives a lot more suspension travel off road i personally just like the look of the navara i think it's a nice looking ute but that's just a personal thing for me I chose a manual over an auto. Once again, a personal thing. I personally prefer to drive a manual. Driving autos drive me mad. I'm just not a fan of it. Manual for me, maybe one day auto, but I still love driving manuals. The Navaras seem very tough and capable off-road. I've never broke like a steering arm or a CV or anything like that off-road, but I do, I go, hard i do drive tough tracks but i'm also quite sensible about it as well i don't go out there and drive like an idiot to break things and with that rear diff lock and the front traction control still works in this model this is the st model so you've got rear diff lock in front traction control they're very capable off-road they're very good at climbing most of the models come with the rear diff lock it's only the rx that doesn't so the sl the st and the STX all come with a rear diff lock. I've got nearly 20,000 Ks on it. So far, I've broken the rear diff. I managed to do the pinion bearing in that and they replaced that under warranty for me. I think I did that in, in Tassie on the Lake Cumberland track. That was quite an insane track and I think I damaged the rear diff on that track, but I'm not 100% sure. But I did cover it under warranty, so can't complain about that too much other than that it's been all good the common problems i've heard with this car are the intercooler piping leaking and not being too great which i'm going to replace soon and the rear main seal in the engine block is known for letting go but i haven't had that happen on this or the one i had before i had a navara before this as well once i've put all the mods on fuel consumption's gone up quite a bit at factory they're about eight liters per hundred it's probably sitting up at about 12 13. once i put the 33s on i really noticed fuel consumption go up and power come down it's fine now but if i'm fully loaded on the highway i do lose speed on hills um, there is that little bit of power lacking which probably would be fixed by a tune or something they got heaps of power straight up, but when you put 33s, a heap of weight, all the mods, you lose that power. I may need to try and sort it out. It's not a problem for me. Like, it's not really an issue or a priority. I'm not actually sure what the weight of this is now. I haven't had it weighed since I put all the mods on, so I'm not sure what the weight is of factory versus now. I just got the right suspension to counter that, so I've got heavy duty suspension in the front and medium suspension in the rear so when you get suspension you have to kind of work out what mods you're going to do now the future mods for this car will be as i said that intercooler piping that will be the next mod i'm looking at getting a rooftop tent one of those hard top i know drifter have just released a hard top rooftop tent i am looking at possibly putting one of those on the roof rather than the swag just try something out different the big question is the rear setup it works well for me it's basic but like it works really well i want to upgrade to a tray and half canopy setup half canopy to keep the weight down i think a full canopy is just going to be too much weight but that's a lot of money <laughs> it's possibly going to come down the track but that would be the next big mod get a alloy tray done up and then like a half canopy where i can put 
um, my dual battery system, maybe like a couple of drawers and keep some gear in there. And then down the back have like my fridge and a couple of those like alley boxes or something I think would work perfect. That's just gonna be a lot of money. So possibilities, but yeah. Now other than that, front locker maybe eventually, front locker, but it's quite capable off-road at the moment. I kind of like, I've done a lot to this car. It works well, it's very capable. Like how much money do you want to spend on it? I'm keen to just get out there and use it. I don't like have to keep modding it and upgrading it and doing this and doing that. I feel like I've done so much to it already. So capable, it works great. Just get out there and enjoy it. And maybe bits and pieces of mods come over time, but no major rush. Now I put on my Instagram if people want to ask any questions. I only put that up a couple of hours ago. It's probably not too much here yet, but I'm filming this video, so it's only the ones I got so far. So I'll just see if there's anything on here. Most of them I feel like I've already answered in the video anyway. There's one here about warranty, which is a good one. Now warranty, you have to be a little bit careful of what they will and won't cover under warranty. Being a brand new car that has a five year warranty, you don't want to wreck all your warranty. With warranty, they have to prove that what broke in the car was a result of a modification that you did. But they, there's a very kind of <laughs> vague line about that and they'll try and get out of things. A lot of it comes down to your local dealer rather than just a general idea. If you're on good terms with your local dealer, they're nice. Have a chat to them before you do mods. Say, hey, I'm gonna do this mod. Some will say, mm, not sure about that. And I was like, yep, no dramas. So the best thing to do, I'm on good terms with my local dealer. Spoke to them about quite a few of these mods. They never had a problem with it. As I said, I've already had that rear diff covered under warranty, but haven't had anything else go wrong yet. But the car's only got 20,000 Ks on it. And as I said, I think that rear diff was probably my um, off-road driving craziness. But it's, yeah. So my best, advi my best advice with warranty is to talk to your dealer and see what they have to say about the mods that you're gonna do and be nice about it. Don't go in there swearing and raging that they didn't cover this, they didn't cover that. Best to talk to them first. I th do I think two inches is enough? Definitely. Three or four inch is a hell of a lot more money. Your car becomes far more illegal and you can fit 33s in the two inch. Like what more do you want? Two inch lift 33s. I, I don't think you need more than that. The steel rims, that's been a big one. As I said, I'm happy with those at the moment. I, I, don't, I don't really see the point. Possibly at some stage. Braking with the bigger tires, definitely do notice braking has faded a bit. It still seems to be fine at the moment, but if it was to get worse, I'd probably have to consider doing something with the brakes. But the brakes, I would say, are quite still quite good at the moment. If you're getting a dual cab ute, any sort of modern diesel, the mods I would go for first would be engine protection and vital component protection. That's what I did first. So I got the secondary fuel filter, oil catch can, breathers, and your snorkel got all those things on straight away to protect your engine from bad fuel, oil clog up, water intake. Following that, my next mods I feel like kind of body protection, like your bash plates and your rock sliders being the first couple. Uh, and then suspension upgrade and tires is always a good one following that. There's nothing really that I regret doing to this car. I kind of thought it all out very well before I did it. I'm happy with all the mods. There's nothing on there I think, oh, I wish I didn't do that. They've all worked really well. And there's nothing that I'm majorly missing at the moment. The main thing would be that tray and canopy setup. But that's just a lot of money. I just can't, I just can't fork out that sort of money on this car at this time. But for me, this car is all about getting out there, adventuring, exploring, camping, with my son Kai and with family, friends, whoever it may be. I love getting out, exploring the country, seeing new places. I love like the challenge of four wheel driving. I love like all those spectacular places you see and things you do. And I love being able to film, record and document my travels along the way. When we go away, we do like to challenge ourselves a bit. We don't do the extreme stuff because these aren't extreme four wheel drives. We like to challenge ourselves on the tracks and I like to get out there and have a go. I really like, that it kind of puts you out of that comfort zone a bit and it challenges you 
and it makes you think of how to get through obstacles and how to conquer various things and you know sometimes you spend hours <laughs> winching up a hill but that's the thing of exploring the unknown you don't know what's out there and sometimes you get a bit nervous about it or a little bit stressed but for me it's all about it kind of puts you in that moment and puts you present at that point of time fully engaged in what you are doing when you're winching spending like three hours winching up a hill and over rock steps now to some mud hole like at the time nothing else nothing else matters it takes you away from whatever else is going on in your life whether that be good things or bad things doesn't really matter but for me all those experiences engage me in the moment and create memories for a lifetime you see a lot of people say oh you shouldn't do go out there on your own or oh, what if you break something but like there's <laughs> there's so many what ifs in life but we've done so much of it on our own and so much like hard stuff and I'm, you know, I'm still here, like we haven't had anything major go wrong, providing you use common sense, preparation, take a few bits and pieces out with you. It's just like, it's so worth it for me to be able to see, experience and do all those things. This car, as I said, it's only had 20,000 Ks on it, so it's only, I bought it brand new. Hasn't, it's got like a lifetime of adventures and full driving to come yet. The best trip we've done so far, we did big three weeks through Tassie, four wheel driving and camp, camping all over the place, which was amazing. We'd done a couple of small trips before that um, to Coffs Harbour and a couple of different places, and then Barrington, and then we've had the whole COVID-19 come through over the last three months, so we haven't been able to get away, but camping, we actually had to go camping again in two, two days, so we're keen for some more adventures to come. I think of how to start these videos. Oh, God. When I first got into filming, I was the worst in front of the camera. It was so awkward. And now, I'm pretty good now, but even still, when I first start a video, it's always that you just don't know how to quite start. Today we're going to have a bit of a more... Nah. See, this is the problem. These are 28575 on. And one other thing, it collects all your leftover oil that your engine. No, I forget. And then to run off. I'll try and. 